Hope you enjoy this look back at the last nine months of my lavender journey. Today we're out here at the lavender field that you see behind me, or at least a portion of the lavender field because I didn't get that much done. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to take you back to the beginning. So when we left California moving down here to start our new homestead and hopefully dive deeper into self-sufficiency and homesteading, part of our plan was to have a small hobby farm and lavender was part of that plan. I technically should be well into my first season of lavender, but things don't always work out the way you plan them. So let's take a journey back in time to see how this all started with the lavender, what happened and how it went. All right, so got my first shipment. Smells like lavender. Lavendula phenomenal. Lavendula phenomenal. 25 phenomenals. Lavender sensational. These are the bigger pots, but the plants aren't any bigger. You're watching the very beginnings of our farm. These are our first lavender starts that we got. And we got sensational lavender, which I'm really excited about. And then we've got phenomenal lavender. And then I've got some grosso lavender coming in as well. Humble beginnings. All right, good morning, everyone. Today is a good day. Yesterday, my shipment from North Carolina Farms came in. Got 1,000 lavender starts for the farm part of my homestead here. So what I'm just gonna do is open these up and see how they ship them in, see what they look like. Notice back here, I've got the uh, 25 Phenomenals and 25 uh, Sensational lavender plant, and these look great. These are some great looking lavender starts. They're super tiny, thumb sized little plung plugs. They're pretty dry. Well, they're not too bad. So, this is a hundred on each flat. Let's see if you can get a gist of how big they are. Right there. All right, my friends, here they are, all unboxed. 10 flats of 100 lavender grosso plants. That's 1,000 lavender plants that I gotta get one inch plugs into the ground in April. Until then, they'll be in a greenhouse, probably repotted into three inch pots. We'll see. It's beginning, folks. Just seeing the excitement and the hope for the future and all that with the unboxing of the lavenders that I purchased, the 1,000 lavender plants that I purchased. Well, might as well follow that up right away with the failure and the reality of the situation. So I don't know, it's been two months, a couple months since I got it. I mean, when you're not working, you lose track of time. I don't even know what day of the week it is today. But um. Yeah, let's take a look. I'm going to get behind the camera and show you what, what's going on. So, my lavender plants, being in these little one-inch things, pretty much are kicking the bucket. Now, so you got some live ones. See all these dead ones over here? This dead one here. So, I've probably lost about half. That's $400, ladies and gentlemen in lavender plants that I lost. And it could be two things. This tray is doing really well, and that one's doing okay. And we have some more in the actual shower downstairs, funny enough. But anyways, it's two things. Light, because they've been in my basement down here, and watering, because these things dried out a lot quicker than I anticipated they would. And I think they dried up and started to shrivel and they just have not been able to recover. So it was a, it was just me not paying attention to them basically what it, what it boiled down to. So let's go look at the other ones. 
Yeah, so here we are in the shower. So these trays are trays of 100, and you can see that tray is pretty much dead. That tray is dead. This tray is about 50%. 50% there, and this, the far one is doing pretty decent. So I'm hoping to get 250 plants to salvage 250 plants out of all these. And if I do, I'll survive, but it's definitely gonna set me back on my plan to have a thousand plants in the ground this year. All right, so I've gone through and separated a bunch of these three inch plastic pots. And you can see them all over there and there, and I've stacked them up and I'm gonna go through and remove the good ones, plant them in the pots, and then see if I can salvage any of the ones that are dying. If I can get them to come back or sprout up, I don't know. And although that I lost track of my lavenders and let them die in here, another reason that I haven't transplanted them yet is because Amazon lost my pots once. I had to reorder, and then there was a delay in shipping. I mean, things on Amazon these days are taking forever to receive. So it took me a long time to get these pots. Anyways, let me go through all these, get these planted, and I'll come back with you and we'll do a tally and see what the damage is. Okay, so it's been about half a second for you guys, but this is day number two for me. And I'm still working on getting my lavenders repotted. So that's what they look like. Little thumb-sized plugs. And uh, I've, been, I've lost a lot but that's my own fault, my own doing. But what I've been noticing as I've been doing this is some of these plugs are really dry and some of them are really wet. I guess that's just my fault about how I was watering or whatnot. But um, yeah, I've got about a hundred more plugs to sort through and plant. So what I'm doing with these plugs is once I get them out, they have like a, almost like a mesh kind of netting on them it's really super thin, but it's holding them together. But what I'm doing is just tearing up this bottom. So I'm getting getting the roots out from the bottom right there. Just kind of breaking them up a little bit before I plant them. There's some base soil in here. Throw them in and then throw this other soil. Now this is um, soil I bought from a lawn garden place called Super Soil but it's very high organic matter and stuff. And lavender's not picky with that. It prefers a more sandy, drier, less nutrient rich soil. So I added play sand in here and mixed it up about a, just a little bit. So it's more sandy. There you go. That's the process for one. So far, I'm into it about 300 times in four hours of time. So I'll check back with you when I get all these done and give you a final count and see what the damage is. All right, folks, the repotting is done and the tally is in. So, just got a bunch of them. I'm using those lids because they don't sit very well on the wire racks. But, got a bunch of lavender. I'm running out of space because I can't plant outside. I don't have my greenhouses up yet. Just lavenders everywhere. And this is only half. Because I got 530 viable plants and 470 didn't make it. Here's all the dead loss. Well, well it's going to be a fun day today. I have let these get out of hand. They've been out in the greenhouse. And they're just full of weeds. So this is what we're starting with. Something along the lines of this. And there, there is a little lavender in there. We gotta get from that to this, basically. And I can't pull the weeds out because the roots are so intertwined in the lavender in the small little cup that it just pulls the lavender out. So I just gotta clip them off. Fun, fun. It's my fault one for not using starting soil. 
there wouldn't have been grass seed in there. Two, not neglecting it as long as I did. So today I gotta pay the price. I think I have six of these racks to do. Let me get started. lavenders next week so he's out there with the chisel plow even a heck thank goodness for good neighbors get this all done Let's take a look at the so we got your unplowed ground here goes through with the chisel plow kind of does that and then the plan is for me to follow up with my small little disc plow to break it all up even more so we're hoping that's gonna work work out All right, so I've got to remove these trees before I plow because they've got these spikes right here that will flatten my tractor tires. Uh, I forget what they're called. I'll put it in the video, but good old pickaxe and some physical labor to get these out. You can see how clotted the ground is right here. That's the section that I've plowed over there so far. It's really hard to tell on camera, but that's the section I plowed and then you can see the line right there. So that's one way. I'll do it across the other way. I've also been taking out large rocks and chunks of uh, wild rose bush and bramble root balls. That way it doesn't grow back under the weed cloth when I set my lavenders. So yeah, just a quick update. Uh, let me get to digging this out. How you do it and you can't pull them out with the pickaxe. Hook them up to the tractor in the bucket and rip them out of the ground. I can't leave all this hard woody stuff in the field. It's either gonna push up the weed fabric or just cause problems. I'm sure there's a rake implement that I can get to drag all this out. But sometimes you just don't have the money to get it or you just don't have one and uh, part of the homestead lifestyle you just got to do what you got to do let me get it offloaded and go get some more all right third and final time so i don't need this whole field so i don't know if you can see the flags out there but they're about right there so we're gonna plow this up a third time, maybe go over twice. Then we gotta mark the rows, heal them. We're almost done and ready for our first planting of lavender. Let's take a look at it and see uh, how much smaller it is from before. It 
feel pretty chunky, but I'm planting perennials, not seeds, and I'm gonna also heal it. But it's a lot better than when we started, that's for dang sure. Let me get to it. Whew, it's hot out here, guys. But it's gotta get done today because it's gonna rain tomorrow. I can tell you that making straight lines in a field that's not straight, it's pretty difficult. <clears throat> but <sighs> if you saw my orchard, you'd understand. <laughs> so I got a straight line here. <sighs> but obviously my fence line's running this way. I wanted my rows to go parallel with that. So they're going like this. So I'm gonna run a straight line or a tight line from edge to edge and then get my hiller and put my hills in. And the plan is, is that hopefully tomorrow we get maybe about a quarter inch of rain just to pat it down a little bit. If I have to rehill, I'll rehill. But then we'll put the weed fabric on and plant the lavenders. So here's my fence line, the other one. This is the one that I want to run parallel with. And you can see this fence down here kind of cuts in at an angle. So and we got the current the corner right here. But yeah. Farmers with GPS and tractors and all that good stuff. That's great. Doing big plots with string and post. It's pretty crazy. For some reason the measurements just never work out. Look at you. Outside the yard, huh? All right, let me get to it. Time to get the this killer on and run my first hill. All right, let's go take a look at the work I did in the field yesterday. Got got my rows in, and the plan was was to wait for the rain to kind of pack it down a little bit, and moisten up the ground. But as you can see, the rain hasn't. There's been barely any rain. So it actually looks fairly nice. Came out pretty good. I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with myself, even though it's just as simple as driving a tractor straight down a row. Uh, it was a lot of thought and a lot of work. So you might be able to hear it's pretty windy today. We're expecting a half an inch of rain tomorrow. Thunderstorms this afternoon and tomorrow. So I don't want to be trying to lay down the weed fabric today with the wind and I feel like it needs some more rain. So I'm going to wait till after the storm tomorrow and then we'll try to do it on the following day. Um, I'm expecting a half an inch of rain to kind of wash these down a little bit. I might have to go over it again with the tractor. You'll notice there's a lot of rocks in the ground out here. That's okay. Lavender will loves kind of rocky soil it helps with drainage um, you can't has to be a well draining soil that's why i hilled them to keep them up high and not sitting in water lavender don't like to be sitting their roots in water so should be good it's going to be lavender grosso over here on this field in the future over here and these long rows all the way down on the other side of the hill these are going to be my sensational and phenomenal lavenders so you can see what the ground looks like. I had to plow with my plow like this was five, five passes, at least five passes. See this ground right here? It's, it's broken up fairly good. I mean, there's still some chunks in there. Um, but if you compare that to, say, over here, this was like three passes or two passes. So you can see like it's a big chunk. All those chunks this was two passes it's not as broken up nearly as much as this lots smaller chunks over here in this area this was my five passes so there you have it there's the 411 on the progress on the field and we'll get back to it in a couple days and give you an update thanks for watching <clears throat> all right ladies and gents so we got about an inch of rain yesterday and last night and for the most part the rain is over not expecting any more heavy rain 
for the next couple days. So kind of worked out good. I got my rose put in. The rain wet it down a little bit, packed it in. I went over it once more. You can see by the tire tracks just a few minutes ago. Went over each row, did one more pass, kind of pulled up the hills just a little bit, not so much. Now I'm gonna take this couple days opportunity to get the weed fabric right here. Get this weed fabric on the rows and get the plants in. Got three days of sunshine and then four days of uh, chance of rain. Man, these are long rows. This is going to be a lot of work solo. That's just the first step. All right, so we're just going to unfold it. And as we go down, we'll find rocks, larger rocks on the hill. Throw it over on the other side to hold it down. Continue to pull this section over. Get it out of time. See, there's my next rock. Go up here to grab this rock. That way it doesn't get completely blown off track. Yeah, well, you get the idea. Let me get back to my two hands. All right, so you can see the mound in there and the green lines. So this is a six foot weed fabric. I think four foot would have been perfect because I'm gonna fold it under out here. I'm gonna fold it under to the green line under to the green line and it'll be right in the right in the tire track so what i'm gonna do is start on one end fold it under tack it down and go from there cutting two feet off of this is kind of pointless plus when you cut it unless you burn the ends it starts to unravel i don't want to cut it two feet off all the way down i don't know what i would do with this little two foot section so I'm just gonna leave it folded under to strengthen up the edges where I tack it down and we'll go with that. <sighs> For, but the future, when we do the rest of this field, we're definitely buying four foot weed fabric. All right, let me get to it. All right, so here is basically how it's going. You can see I folded that section in there. We have the end out here. So there's my first green, which is a foot marker. So I just kind of pinch it, pick it up. I'm trying to do this with one hand, folks. And then get it to fold up underneath, pull it tight, and then tack it. Staple it down with one of these six inch landscape pins and a hammer. So there it is all the way out. You can see it's starting to fold in and that's what it's looking like up here. So let me get back to it. All right, folks. Pickaxe. I'm pulling the dirt over the weed fabric and then smashing it down or stomping it down. It's just way, way too much work, especially when I've got 800 feet of this to do. It's just not going to happen. I need to find a, a better solution. So, also, the foot that I took off of that was too much. I ended up only taking off six inches, making it a five foot. I think I'm not even going to do that. What I'm going to try to do over here with my rows, hopefully the tractor will fit down the middle. I'm going to hill again, but I'm going to hill in the middle when I lay my fabric over the hill or the my planting hill, then I'll just pull the dirt over the fabric, you know, with a, like a rake or something, instead of trying to dig it up with a pickaxe and slide it over on there. 
it's just it's just way too much work so let's see what i'm talking about you know it's a learning process you know you do a little bit and figure out hey that sucks and try it a different way so here's here it is here's the hill a planting hill with a six inch weed fabric on it there's no row on this side but over here there's another row so the idea would be that if i put six foot weed cloth here it'd come out to about right there but if i heal this prior to putting it down there'll be a hill in the middle and then i can pull it over both sides onto the weed fabric with minimal effort well at least that's the plan anyways <sighs> all right so <sighs> That looks like rain. No rain in the forecast, but those are some dark old clouds. Oh. But I figured I need to do this right since this is a perennial lavender. We're not going to be pulling them out and replanting. Got to do it right the first time. We have some pretty wicked storms out here. I don't need this weed fabric blowing off and pulling out my crop. So, all right, let me get to it. All right, here we are, another day. Got some of the fam bam helping me. So what I did was I took the tractor, there's a hill, there's a hill, took the tractor through the row and made a small hill in the middle so that the weave fabric could go down and then we'll pull the dirt over the side from the center onto the weed fabric. So here it is, basically six feet with no dirt <clears throat> and then the finished product before we plant looks something like this where there's dirt over the edges to heal and the dirt over the edges and then that way when I flatten this out I can take my mower in here and mow and keep it uh keep the weeds down so long day look at that beautiful sky never saw that in california dark ass blue sky white puffy clouds gotta love it loving the life look at that white blue green who's this it's been a long hard day still not done yet I got at least two more rows of weed fabric to throw down the hard part about it is covering pulling the dirt over and covering it up because it's just manual with like a pickaxe or a molly it's just hard so what you missed out on is I got those little yellow marks every three feet I was gonna run a straight line to make my row straight, but trying to burn holes in a thing with a rope, you know, using your foot, and I figure I'm just gonna try to do the best I can eyeballing it. It didn't work so well in my garden, but we'll see. All right, it just took a few minutes to burn the holes in. I just eyeballed it. You can see, eh, you know, there's a little, crookedness and unevenness so for the OCD farmer or anybody OCD this is going to drive them nuts seeing people use boards and make these things perfectly straight but I ain't got time here we are in August first frost day is third week in October I gotta get this stuff in the ground give it a shot yeah, this one's pretty off, but once plants grow out, get bushy, we won't notice. We won't tell no one. Shh. Wowzers, this is the first uh, tray of lavenders I brought out. It's going in this row. It may sound funny to some of you, but man, I'm getting excited. I don't know why, it just feels like maybe it's officially becoming a small little hobby farm. You know the official first crop 
I mean, the unofficial first crop, you know, we did do the ginseng, but I don't know, something about this just looking towards the future just excites me. So, yep. All right, so got the holes done in most of these. On to the next step with the handy dandy bulb planter. I'm going to remove the dirt out of said hole. deep hole dump that dirt out I'm gonna do that all the way down but I guys got you guys here with me I want to do the official first plant see how it goes oh, you know what I'm gonna need some soil because that's all right just kidding I'll get these holes out and then I'll get some soil and then we'll move forward This is the soil that I'm going to throw in around the holes, fill the space, fill the gaps around the lavender plants and the holes I dug. Ugh. Long day, exhausted. There she is. Sorry you guys missed it. I needed both hands. First of many lavenders are in. Lavender Grosso. <sighs> Phew. It's been nine months. <sighs> Good morning, everyone. The lavender field in the morning. Minus the lavender. It's the future potential, what we're looking at here. Just wanted to check on my plants this morning. Make sure that they were all still here overnight. Alright, so I wanted to give you all an update on how the lavenders were doing out here. So it's been about four days. We've had a pretty severe thunderstorm with some pretty whipping winds. And uh, it looks like everything is still doing alright. There are some that are kind of in the danger zone, but for the most part, they didn't die. Uh, you know, it's like we got some new growth coming out already. Uh, yeah. See, so you can see that when we transplanted, we got some wilting, but it just quickly turned around and they're already pointing, you know, back up towards the sun. They are coming back. And I think they're going to do just fine. So what I need these guys to do is I need them to get going. I need to get some solid roots in the ground so that they're going to survive the winter. They're going to survive the snow, the freezing cold, and make it through the next year. So that's my hopes. That's my plans. Uh, I will have to tell you, I thought it was going to take up a lot more room than this. I mean, I got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. I had, I prepared three additional rows and I still have all that field left to go. And then all the way down over the hill on these rows and yeah. But remember I did buy a thousand. 
mean, you're looking at about only 300, 350. So we'll have to get some more next year. And as long as these survive and they do well, we'll have to get some more next year. So fingers crossed. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. And uh, we'll check back in before winter, a couple months, and see how well the crop is doing. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys are doing lavender. You have a lavender farm, you've tried lavender, you're interested in lavender. Throw it down in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Wish us luck. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe to stay in touch so you can see what happens next with this lavender field. Wish me luck. I'm hoping that someday this whole field is covered with purple flowers. We got a gorgeous view from our property. So thank you for everyone who has subscribed in the past and stayed with us. We wish you all the best. See you on the next video.